जो स्टूडेंट फेल होते हैं एंड देन दे सक्सीड देर इज ऑलवेज दैट टेंज ऑफ यू नो सेल्फ क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओनली देन यू फाइंड सक्सेस Hi everyone my name is Anuj Chintal welcome to my channel today i have with me Ashish Krishna who has recently cleared RPA grade B 2021 examination first of all congratulations uh, Ashish on clearing the examination thank you so much sir thank you and uh, before we start with the actual question and answer session i would request Ashish to uh, you know introduce himself tell all the aspirants about himself and then we will take it forward Uh, so uh, uh i am originally from patna i have done my entire schooling from patna uh i graduated from triple it gwalior back in 2018 uh i did an integrated degree i it was a btech it plus mba uh then i got placed in a analytics firm uh from my college but the same year i was appearing for upsc i had started preparing for upsc when i was in college so uh, uh i could not join the company i cleared prelims i cleared mains i appeared in interview but i could not make it to the final list i missed it by four marks uh then i sat in rbi first attempt back in 2019 i could not clear the prelims by two marks uh and then this is my second attempt at rbi and this year i managed to clear it I think it's a, a very similar story to what I have had in the past. Of course, my story was very much cut off. At one point, I missed uh, the final cutoff of UPSC by six marks. I remember, and uh, uh, I always used to go to the interview round of RBI and UPSC, but the cycle was repeated. So it's uh, fortunate, and at the same time, I think you must have worked on your weaknesses. That was a major problem with me. I could not find the time, or I could not find the guidance, or I did not have that kind of wisdom. I think to work on my weaknesses to that level. So uh, you know that is the first learning. Jo students fail hote hain and then they succeed. There is always that tinge of you know self-critical analysis, which is very important. Only then you find success. That's true. Okay. Sir. yeah uh, let's move forward uh, let's start with phase 1 preparation of course a lot of it must have been done through csat and because you're a techy so you must be comfortable in a lot of areas of quant and reasoning but uh, when it comes to ga or other areas how did you prepare what was your strategy uh so uh, the ga part was mostly serviced by the current affairs that i used to read for upsc and uh, before my phase 1 uh i made it a point to refer to uh for some months i refer to newspapers as well as i used to refer to monthly compilations of various uh, coaching institutes the free ones which are available on internet so the ones which are specifically focused towards bank examinations so the thing is if you are preparing for upsc the current affairs sources uh the demand and uh, the way those modules are prepared they are not aligned with the bank examinations specifically rbi yes so uh, for questions like uh, authors books and appointments person in news uh, for that you have to refer to a, a bank specific source mm-hmm. so that's what i did i prepared some 6 7 months worth of current affairs mm-hmm. uh, specifically before phase 1 and uh, for the quant and reasoning part uh, these two parts i found actually i found uh, particularly challenging Hmm. because uh, the csat uh, level of paper and the rbi phase 1 paper they are very very different it's, it's a different ball game altogether and uh, the first time i sat in the uh, prelims uh, i'm sorry the phase 1 examination of rbi i found it very very tough and uh, i could barely scrape through sectional cutoffs hmm. in my first attempt hmm. so um, i watched a lot of videos i took some courses and uh, this time i it did me some favor i improved a lot on uh, spe- specifically the quantitative and reasoning parts hmm. so and english uh, uh, i have not uh, prepared specifically for english because when i was in my college i used to write essays for a magazine and i wrote a lot of essays i used to publish it on my blog blog site 
so that's where the english part was taken care of i did not prepare specifically for english so that would be my phase one preparation strategy uh, you said that you were bad at content reasoning according to rpa standards and then you worked towards it so other than let's say you must have taken some courses etc cetera, etc cetera, but what was your overall methodology of preparation like watch videos of concepts first and then practice and then take mocks or something else whatever it was uh, i think it will be very nice if you can bring it out uh, so sir the problem is that uh, engineering graduates they are um, naturally organically good at quantitative and reasoning questions but as far as rbi phase 1 is concerned the demand is on a different level altogether even if you have like i had cleared ntsc national level when i was in class 8 and even that examination required me to have a good uh, reasoning and quant skills so i had been initiated into reasoning and quant but even by those standards rbi exam requires you to sit down uh, watch videos know how to solve the questions in a very limited amount of time and that needs tricks hmm. uh, we were taught vedic maths when we were small hmm. so something on those lines uh, every there are certain types of questions every even for reasoning there are ways how to eliminate how to uh, reach to the answer faster yes yes so yes. it's not about uh, solving the question per se it is more about solving the question in the extremely limited amount of time that is there hmm so yes. i was saying that it, it is about uh, solving questions in the given limited time that is there and for that you would need the tips the tricks as well as more than even the tips and tricks it's important to practice them hmm. so i whenever i used to get time in my free time when i was not particularly studying hmm. i used to uh, download a mock paper hmm. and i used to just randomly solve questions hmm. and the most value that i got out of that was i started recognizing what questions to leave in the uh, phase 1 examinations because there are a lot of uh, quant and reasoning questions which you should leave when you see them mm. if you start solving them you might compromise the rest of your paper okay so that's how i prepared okay wonderful i think uh, uh, elimination using mocks which is reverse engineering and all these are basic methods of preparing for such competitive examination but a lot of students in the pressure of you know covering everything or not leaving any stone unturned they forget about these areas very often it happens with a lot of us So I think you've brought out very important points here. Time management, basically, that's what you're talking about when you're saying that you have to leave certain questions, right? Okay, amazing. Let's move to phase two now. So, ESI, I'm very certain UPSC prep prep must have helped to a very large extent, but finance and management are completely different. You don't read about those in your UPSC prep. Your optional was also completely different. So, how did you go about your preparation of these areas? Uh, for finance and management because i had an mba degree mm. so uh, for the initial phases i banged on the notes that i made in my college but uh, the problem is that the phase 2 demands are not very aligned with uh, what the college notes could service yes. so um, i had to rely on courses mm. i watched some youtube videos for that also mm. um, certain accounting uh, Uh, pro- problems some accounting concepts basic accounting concepts mm. uh, i tried using free sources as far as i can mm. and when i found and because this time around uh, the time available between phase 1 result and phase 2 was very very little mm. so i went for online courses mm. and uh, i watched video lectures and uh, uh, i made it a point to watch uh, video lectures twice mm. uh, because i feel that if you watch video lectures once and you don't practice it is redundant it is re- irrelevant hmm. you would not be able to recall it in the examination hmm. so i made very short notes while i was watching the video i used to watch them at 2x hmm. and uh, finish the entire video lecture <laughs> series twice so this is what i did for uh, fm paper so did you make notes online or did you make notes on paper no i made notes on paper on paper and how did you align them with the notes that are already given by these uh, you know courses i did not refer to because i had very very little time for preparing mm. so uh, the thing is there is this recency effect that if you look at something a sufficient number of times 
uh, rather than uh, relying on new sources yeah. new because i feel that if i have written something down if i have seen something somewhere and if i look at it again i have a better shot at retaining it for the examination mm-hmm. so i completely for i did not go for the notes pre compiled mm-hmm. notes mm-hmm. i watched the videos i made my own notes and i referred to them for my revision before the examination amazing amazing i think that's a new method of preparing that you have brought about a lot of students go otherwise because there is little time so what they do is they only refer to notes before the examination rather than spending time on videos because of course videos take more time but yes you are right the retention rate is also higher when it comes to videos uh, if you're simultaneously able to make notes okay uh, how about english uh, because you must have had to make some changes because english for rbi is a little different when it comes to word limit uh, than english or essay writing for upsc so how did you make sure that you were able to write an essay in 300 to 400 words and uh, what were the basic steps you followed in english essay writing so i uh... as i said i have i have loved writing i i am really into writing so i really like writing and um, that was an anchor for me hmm. and specifically while preparing for um, phase 2 hmm. uh, i was so bogged down by esi and fm that i could not really spare time for english paper hmm. so most of what i wrote in the paper it was from bor- uh, it was from latent experiences yes uh, i did not per se practice mocks for english mm. but i felt that rather than targeting english as a specific paper for phase 2 mm. uh, you should be on the lookout for uh, stuff that you can use for writing essays even when when you are reading mundane articles mm. some good words uh, to enrich your vocabulary um, some interesting facts like uh, i remember i uh, introduced my essay this time with uh, with a comparison from the british east india company mm. uh, i don't i'm sorry i, I can't remember the exact context mm. but i i used the term pax britannica mm. and i did not read it uh, i did not read it at a place which was even remotely connected to rbi or upsc preparation mm. so sometimes such uh, tidbits of information that really really helpful and mm. you get a good intro you get a good conclusion mm. so my suggestion would be to be on the lookout be alert while you are reading stuff you try to latently absorb the stuff that you are reading thinking mm. that it might come in handy when you are writing the essay paper yes yes so it's your accumulated knowledge and experience of the past 7 8 years probably uh, throughout your college whatever you have been doing that 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 gave results now in this examination right yes. and that's what i keep telling all the students and this is a problem that we face uh, you know uh, majorly in ugc examination so we are training teachers to become lecturers through ugc net exams uh, if they qualify that they qualify to become lecturers in colleges and the examination is very wide it has a lot of areas for example a comma student is also required to read some parts of the constitution so a lot of those students call us and they tell us sir we don't want to read it because i am an expert in commerce i don't want to be spending time on you know something like constitution so it takes us a lot of time for us to convince them that you are going to become lecturers you should have a basic idea mm-hmm. instead of going through a 10 pager note on constitution it's better to go through 10 videos in which we i have you know explained everything every basic thing about the constitution so 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 this is the idea that you are uh, you know explaining right now all this latent knowledge latent experiences they come in handy at a lot of times uh, let's move to the interview now it must have been there must there might have been questions from upsc although you have little gap between your uh you know uh, uh your education and this examination but what was the direction of the interview what kinds of questions were asked uh so uh my panel was of uh, deepak singhal sir hmm. and um, uh it was a tough interview i would not say that it was an easy interview because <laughs> singhal sir yeah <laughs> a singhal sir <laughs> so um uh, yes this point was very relevant this point did come up that uh, i had a gap and uh, he did ask me that why was it that i was not doing anything in between my graduation year and my rba preparation hmm. so uh, i don't know what my exact marks are in the interview 
but right now what i can uh, make out from my experience was that it is perfectly okay to have gap years it is perfectly mm-hmm. okay to be working for something because uh, right now all of these competitive examinations are very very tough mm-hmm. and it is perfectly normal and perfectly acceptable if you are not making it to the final list in the first attempt very few and very lucky people i would emphasize the word lucky it's not just about your hard work you have to have a push of luck uh so it is very tough for people to get into the uh, the wherever they want to be so if you're not making it if you're having gap years it's okay the only demand i think of the panel from the candidates is that they should own that and they should be very confident while answering that yes i was doing something i was preparing honestly i did my best i could not make it but i nevertheless i was doing it and i think so that's what worked for me mm-hmm. very nice i think you put it very very well because it is fine to have a gap of certain years i don't think it's a it's a, it's a crime you're committing by not doing anything i think i was going through instagram some days back and i read a similar post which said that it's fine not to be working for a while uh, uh, you know it was focused on the hr interviewers hr all these people who have been who started using artificial intelligence to sort out candidates and the first filter is that if any student has a gap then he's his his resume is uh, you know filtered out so it was targeted upon them saying that it's only human to have these kind of gaps even as kids we used to have all those years where we would not be doing well in our school or for straight 6 months we would not be good at studies and then we'll again get back into the game so i think it's completely human i think uh, the problem is that we have become so competitive that we've forgotten that we've forgotten how humans are and how humans should be <laughs> you know even in a settled life it's completely okay not to be doing something for a while to relax a little to get back into shape into you know your perfect mental health and you know i i i can i can relate with what you said because uh, when i graduated from my college i was uh, around 100 kgs of weight mm-hmm. and the time that i got for preparing i while preparing i also focused on my health mm-hmm. so uh, i got back in shape and that is something which i could not have done had i been uh, sucked into job straight after college yes 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 you are completely right so all these things uh, they are often ignored nowadays because we are being thought of as computers or competitors to computers that is the problem and and you know whenever i hire anyone whenever uh, we have some people coming in and trying to work for us uh, we look at it very very positively okay you have had a gap what were you doing at that time what was the focus area were you focusing on your mental health if you were what were the outcomes did you get anything out of that it's always I, and i think it's 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 required also that's very important because if we keep working 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 we don't learn new things we forget to explore only only when we you know stop and look for a while just by sitting or you know mentally standing and sitting and looking for a while we get to explore things around us you know that's and, very and you really get to know what you want from life yes yes you uh, because our education system is designed in such a way that you never really get the time to really think what you because engineering is a default option for all of us most of us i'd like yes, to say yes so that time when you are graduating from the college third or fourth year maybe that is i guess for most of us i think most of us would like to would 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 be able to relate to me that your sec- third and fourth year of your college is the first time when you really think about what you want in life Mm. and often by that time it's too late mm. so i think a gap year is okay and if you can justify it in your interview it is not going to damage because i with a multiple years of gap i still did make it to the uh, grade b post so yes yes. Uh, yes yes wonderful wonderful i think i have had a very nice dis- we've had a very you know intense discussion out here and uh, i've had a lovely time uh, uh, before we end anything you want to any message that you would want to send out to all the future aspirants anything that you want to share uh, i would like to say uh, one thing and i've noted it down just a second yeah uh, the thing is what i have felt in all my long years of preparation was that uh, it is useless to read something which you can't revise in the week just prior to the examination 
So I've seen people uh, getting crazy about what sources to read, reading so many books, so many sources, and not even getting the time to revise before the examination. So I have had this mantra all through my preparation journey that uh, if you are able to revise something uh, at least three to four times, it is only those stuff that you would be able to recall. Hmm. So when you are starting your preparation, please keep this in mind that whatever you are reading, if you are not able to make very extremely short notes of it, which can be revised just before the examination, it is useless for you. Hmm. Hmm. And um, uh, there's one more thing that I'd like to say that. Um, uh, please keep yourself disciplined, uh, have a daily routine and please stick to it. Mm. Uh, please uh, don't wander away and uh, don't get uh, all worked up seeing other people getting ahead okay. because once you make it, it all stops making any difference. Mm. You just mm. have to succeed once and it's all going to be okay. Mm. You know, this second point is so important because uh, especially before the interview, I, I, I had a lot of calls from my own students who were like, sir, uh, the WhatsApp group of interviewees is going crazy. They're talking about all these things that I've never heard of. And I'm like, please don't worry about it. You know, stick to the basics. It's always the basics that the examiner or the interviewer is going to come back to. And you have to focus upon that. If Even if you're not able to answer these crazy, difficult technical questions, he's, he will not worry about it. But if you're not able to answer the basic ones, then he would want to have a relook at your candidature. That's true, sir. And the questions asked are almost the very basic ones. Yes. I was not asked any question which was too technical or I had to read some research paper for, for answering that question. None of such questions were asked to me. Yes. So yes. you are uh, what you're saying is very, very true, sir. Mm-hmm. So, so this is what I think in the entire prep, I think it holds true. Stick to the basics. Even in UPSC, I've realized that students, you know, are reading some crazy kind of books. I don't know what and what not are they exploring, but the, the exam ultimately boils down to all the basic stuff. I remember when I used to write the exam, we would read all kinds of books and then the question would come from the back of NCRT. <laughs> so we, so after the exam, we were like, we did not read this. And this is from where the question has come. You know, majority of the questions, they just mold, you know, some parts of NCRT and they would always have questions from there. So, uh, you know, reading to the basics, through the basics again and again and again, always works wonders. And I remember my PhD uh, when when we were doing master's, our, uh, our professor used to often used to say that if you go in for a PhD, that is when you will realize the importance of basics. Uh, till MPhil, you would feel that I have to go ahead. I have to read more and more and more. And then when you start with your PhD, then you'll realize, oh, I don't even know the basics of it all. So uh, that was a very good advice. And I think through you, all the students should also keep that in mind. Okay. uh, So that was all. I think I had a beautiful time talking to you. I hope all the aspirants are able to use your wisdom, your experience and maintain discipline and at the same time stick to the basics, understand the need and the importance of the examination as it should be. Uh, All the best, Ashish. Uh, Congratulations once again. I'm sure you're going to have a nice time in RBI. It's a beautiful organization. You're going to love working there. The culture is very, very positive and very lively. So you're going to have a nice time. All the best. Take care. Thank you so much, sir. You take care too.